Our New Testament lesson and the text for our sermon <clears throat> comes from the Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 32 through 37. Mark 13, 32 through 37. Listen to the word of God. Jesus said, But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here in the readings, let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. It was the only thing about which he talked. Billy wanted a watch for his birthday, and he made certain everyone knew it. Whenever they went to Walmart, he conveniently got lost so his mother could find him staring into the watch case. He constantly asked other family members what time it was. At church, he would comment to his parents how attractive were certain people's watches. When asked how long he had studied for a test, he would reply, Well, I'm really not sure since I don't own a watch. When arriving late for dinner, he would remark, I lost track of time. I I guess if I had had a watch, I would have been there. He collected watch catalogs. The question of what do you want for your birthday was always answered with one word, watch. It got to the point that every other word out of his mouth was, watch. Finally, his dad had had enough. At the supper table, as Billy, for the umpteenth time, launched into his desperate need of a timepiece, better known as a watch, his father exploded. Billy, I forbid you to mention again that you want a watch for your birthday. In fact, I forbid you to say that word. Chastened, Billy defiantly buttoned his lip. Until Friday, Every Friday evening, the children were required to recite the Bible verse they had learned that week. As the recitation came around the table, Billy announced his chosen verse was our sermon text this morning, and he had decided to use the King James Version of Mark 13, 37, which reads, And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. In our scripture, it can seem like Jesus constantly says, watch, watch, watch. In verses 33, 35, and 37, he uses the word, or as our version translates it, keep awake. So what did Jesus want us to watch for? Commonly called the little apocalypse because of their description of the end times, these verses are often dismissed as the domain of television fanatics trying to raise spiritual hysteria and money. We are enamored and appalled by their charts and arguments delineating when the end times will occur. Dates are foretold, set, and 
reset. When they pass, pretty soon we can become jaded to all this last day's talk. Well, if it makes you feel any better, so was Jesus. Look at what he says in verse 32. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Even Jesus didn't know when these things would occur, which ought to tell us something about the usefulness of our prognostications. Yet Jesus then goes on to reiterate over and over that we must be watching, be awake, vigilant. Now, Jesus' admonition of his own lack of knowledge concerning the cataclysmic last days indicates his words are directed not to the future, but to the here and now. He's warning us about being certain to live the faith today. I believe his admonition to keep alert speaks to two pitfalls threatening our spiritual lives. First, we can become weary watching. We attempt to keep vigilant in our faith while all around us the world crumbles with despair and evil. Rape drugs proliferate on university campuses. A man murders his family to get back at his wife. Starving Syrian refugees stream back and forth across borders. You let people out of traffic and they don't even wave a hand to thank you. It can feel like much of the good we do has so little effect that the gospel hardly makes a dent. No wonder our watching and waiting are infiltrated by weariness. But so it was for Jesus. He lives a perfect life, offers love, forgiveness, and truth, proclaims God's power to transform lives into beacons of goodness and righteousness. And what do they do? They claim he doesn't understand their ways. He doesn't pay homage to their worlds of ego and power, so they scorn him, attempt to silence him, say he's not spiritual enough, and when none of that works, they kill him. Our passage occurs right before the week culminating with the crucifixion. Seeing what was coming, how could Jesus be so positive? Tell us to keep watching. Because he trusted in the intervention of Almighty God. The Easter season reminds us that God does not forsake his people. Usually that intervention occurs in ways and methods unforeseen or foreign to us. For instance, how could the birth of a Jewish baby 2,000 years ago, a product of peasant stock who never wrote anything or even traveled outside of Israel, make a difference? But today, the power of that intervention is obvious and real. And God continues to work in the lives of his people. But we must be watching for it. Often those moments of grace seem minor and inconsequential, their importance realized only in hindsight. But within our families, our jobs, our day-to-day -day activities, we keep watch because God is here working among his people. The secretary bursts into the office of a Detroit executive on May 21st, 1927, after Charles Lindbergh had flown solo across the Atlantic Ocean and cried, Mr. Murphy, a man has flown, just flown from New York to Paris all by himself. Her employer continued to work calmly. She cried, don't you understand? A man has just flown the Atlantic all by himself. Then Murphy looked up. All by himself, he said quietly, a man can do anything. Let me know when a committee flies the Atlantic.
The struggle of everyday living can jade and blind us to the miracles God works within the world and each one of us. Jesus wants us to open our eyes, keep awake, and we will see the evidence of God's handiwork all around us. Jesus admonishes us to keep alert because we can become weary watching, and second, we must keep focused because it is so easy to go to sleep. The parable in our scripture describes a night watchman lured by sleep more than his duty. Most likely, he was a good and valued servant. He had no plans to fall asleep. In fact, quite the opposite. He wanted to be a faithful employee to fulfill his duty. But as time went on, the master did not appear. And all his walking around, stamping his feet, even singing to himself could not abate the nodding of his head, the warmth of curling up next to the fire. Not meaning to, thinking how he wanted to do his best, nonetheless he slowly gave in to the weariness drawing him. How easy it is for us to fall asleep we want to be Christian serve Christ be faithful vacations sporting events children's program work not enough time to finish everyday tasks all of these lure us away from spiritual activities they're certainly not bad things but slowly subtly often without our realizing it our priorities change the faith is no longer number one on our agenda I mean, we want it to be, we say it is, but when we examine our use of time, money, and energy, we are shocked what, about what has happened and not really sure how. Jesus reiterated, at, reiterated admonitions to keep awake. Remind us how subtly habits can change, priorities become blurred, excuses rise to our defense. And before we know it, we have gone to sleep in a world smilingly drawing us away from Christ's church and faith. Jesus tells us we can prevent this by keeping awake, being vigilant, so that nothing can come between us and our God. At the outbreak of the Civil War, a Tennessee cotton planter could not decide which cause to support, the North or the South. He had friends on both sides, so he decided to be absolutely neutral. He wore a gray jacket and blue trousers, thereby dressing for both the Confederacy and the Union. One day, this man was caught in the middle of a skirmish between the two armies, so he stood up and shouted that he was neutral in this fight and expected to be allowed to leave the field before the battle closed in upon him. But Union sharpshooters, seeing the gray jacket, riddled it with bullets. And Confederate marksmen, seeing the blue pants, filled them with lead. This morning, are you and I wearing gray and blue? When it comes to following Jesus or the world, trying to have it both ways. Even Jesus is clueless. It is important to remember even Jesus did not know when the last days would occur. In our scripture, Jesus warns us to do whatever it takes to keep awake, to be aware of God working in our lives and how easy it is to be drawn away from him. 
this morning as we partake of this sacrament let us give thanks that we have seen God arrive in the form of Jesus portrayed for us in this bread and grape juice and let us watch be awake and vigilant confident that our God is here and will continue to work in the lives of his people in you and in me.